Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video we'll be having a look at this Moto Edge 50 Pro smartphone. And guys, as you can see, I've already taken out this uh, phone and actually been testing it for the last six days. In fact, I used it on Holi and in fact, I also traveled a bit with this one. So in this video, I'll give you my initial impressions and overview of this smartphone. Of course, it comes inside this box. It's known as the Edge 50 Pro. And uh, here is the handset itself. We'll come back to it later, but let me show you what comes inside the box box and it came in this uh, packaging eco-friendly paper packaging and uh, here if I open there is one more thing and uh, here we have a case I like that uh, we do get a case but frankly speaking at least for the variant that we have we don't require the case but they have given the case as you can see this is a uh, hard plastic case so this is actually nice and one strange thing that I'm noticing is that there is a scent in the box so yeah it is evident there is some scent in the box and this is something new so this is how it actually looks with the case uh, with this one and in fact uh, it comes in three different colors guys uh, the black uh, this is the lavender one and there is also one more uh, color i didn't get access to that one but that's supposed to have a very different kind of a hand finish this one is actually guys uh, uh, to touch this is actually uh, they say it's vegan leather but also it has a sort of a silicon coating so it looks like uh, the device is having a silicon case uh, built in that's what it actually feels but yeah you do have the case i used it last six days without the case uh, we also do get this uh, this actually having a quite a bit of heft this is the 125 watt charger and the usb type c uh, cable do note that uh, you'll get the 125 watt charger with the higher end variant as you can see this says that 125 watt charger in the box if you go with the base variant that has uh, 8 gigabytes of ram the charger bundled in the box will be 68 watt though the handset does support that 125 watt charging and this 125 watt charging is insane guys in less than I, uh, 20 minutes it was just fully fully charged so this is uh, insane i would say this is the handset itself and if you notice like uh, many of the motorola phones this is also having that uh, curved uh, oled screen this is a p oled screen i like the fact that if you notice the bezels uh, if i move towards the top and the uh, bezels and the side bezels and everything they are very very symmetrical and uh, let me talk about the pricing first and the pricing for the 8 gigabyte is for 31,999 that you can see about 32,000 and for the 12 gigabyte variant is 35,999 that's about 36,000 and there are also going to be some card offers I don't know which specific but if you use those offers there'll be a 2,000 rupees discount so you can get the base variant that's for 8 gigabytes and 256 gigabytes of storage for 30k and for the features that this packs uh, that's actually very very good in fact i completely forgot this also has wireless charging 50 watt wireless charging i didn't have that special 50 watt charger uh, but i did check it in my car that has wireless charging and yes it was charging also this is supposed to have wireless uh, what do you say reverse charging also so, uh, it can do wireless reverse charging up to 10 watts also one thing that motorola team told me when i was having a briefing about this one they were talking a lot about the camera and they were claiming that this is the best camera setup uh, that they have given on a motorola phone till date and in fact i feel that that's correct because as I've told you I've uh, gone to a vacation and as you can see here are some of the sample shots I used this uh, smartphone for photography and I was not disappointed we'll talk about the camera later on but first let's talk about the physical overview of the device and all this thing uh, as you can see this is having a 6.7 inch uh, P OLED screen and it's actually 1.5 K uh, screen so pretty high resolution uh, it has 144 Hertz refresh rate or just keep it on auto by default it was set to auto one big thing about this uh, smartphone is that this is the first smartphone in the world that is certified by Pantone for color accuracy and uh, uh, color skin tones and all those things. In fact, uh, by default, when you first get this smartphone, this is something that you have to actually change. I changed it immediately. If I go towards the display <clears throat> and if I go to colors, by default, it is actually set to vivid. So everything will look over punchy or something like that. Natural is the best. It, it, it uh, mimics what is there in reality. But most people in our smartphones, we do like slightly saturated colors. So I would say uh, most of you would like the radiant one. Uh, by default, it is set to vivid. It is over uh, saturated. But I've kept it to radiant and it's working very well. If you want the most natural colors, you can just go to the natural. As you can see, it lowers the color saturation and but vivid is just two so radiant is the good balance and further you can actually play around with the color temperature 
also it has the dc dimming and pw dimming so even when i was keeping the brightness at very low brightness at night i didn't have that flickering or anything so that way i would say in terms of display no issues again this one also is having that in display fingerprint scanner and this comes with a new moto ui they are calling this a new version of the moto ui moto hello ui so uh, it has changed a few things i would say the iconography and all those things internally have changed uh, you can customize this by default nothing is this so again a uh, lot of uh, new things uh, they have added in the ui but the good thing is that out of the box this comes with android 14 and now motorola is finally giving uh, has promised next three years of android upgrades on this one and four years of security updates so that way i would say motorola is listening to user feedback uh, so again this also has that ram boost for 12 gigabytes it's uh, adding about four gigabytes as you can see and if i go to device details as you can see out of the box comes with android uh, 14. Uh, now coming to the processor, uh, this is having the Snapdragon uh, 7 Gen 3 SoC. This is a premium mid-range uh, processor I would say and this handled this device without any issues. I didn't notice any lagginess, jankiness on this one even when I was uh, keeping it, forcing it to 144 hertz. So that way I would say this device actually, uh, this chipset handles it very very well. In fact, I noticed no heating issues on this uh, smartphone. Even uh, when I was traveling, uh, there was no AC or uh, anything where I was roaming around the hot sun the handset did not heat up even once so that way i would say it's calibrated very well and again no jitterness or anything as uh, like that i just played ca call of duty casually and it handled it fine but if you want to know hardcore gaming or something check out some other channels uh, now coming to the uh, battery on this one uh, the battery is a 4500 milliamp hour on this one and i would say the battery life is decent uh, and i would say uh, when i was traveling for four days i was exclusively only on mobile data and when i was only on mobile data uh, with the typical full day of usage i was getting about five and a half hours of sot but with regular mixed usage that is mobile data half of the day and then on wi-fi and something then i was getting a screen on time anywhere from about seven to seven and a half hours of screen on time so i would say battery life is decent and will last uh, for the full typical uh, day without any issues and again that uh, fast charging that we have on this is, is ridiculously fast so that way in terms of battery life i don't have a problem i also like the weight balance of this device this device simply does not feel heavy and because it's having this curved uh, edges over here to hold it also uh, though it's 6.7 inch screen it is actually ignorantly i would say they have done a good job with this one now moving to the camera, the main camera is actually a 50 megapixel and this is having aperture of f1.4 which is very very well. In fact, in this price range, I think so no other smartphone goes there. In fact, I would say if any smartphone claims even uh, aperture of f1.6 or f1.7, I say it's pretty good. This is going insane, f1.4 and of course it's optically stabilized, that is OIS is having and it also has laser auto focusing. So that is also an important thing. Next, uh, we also have a 10 megapixel that is a 3x zoom. And I also like the fact that this one is also having optical image stabilization. And you can digitally zoom up to 30x, but up to 10x shots, if you digitally zoom, uh, they come out good with this 3x optical zoom. And uh, we also have a 13 megapixel that is ultra wide. But this does a job of two things that is ultra wide, of course, and also macro shots. So I would say very functional uh, three cameras that we are having on this one. And I like the fact that that even the zoom x that that's the 3x telephoto zoom is also optically stabilized because generally in this price range they most of the vendors don't give a, a telephoto but if they give a telephoto also it's not optically stabilized so that way i would say they have done a good job front facing is that punch hole kind of a thing as you can see and uh, let me just increase the brightness also uh, the brightness can go actually pretty bright out in outdoor situations i did not have a problem this is uh, again a 50 megapixel uh, with the f 1.9 aperture and the good thing is that this one also has auto focusing generally the front facing cameras are generally don't have what do you say auto focusing that has just a fixed focus but this does have that coming to the camera interface it's very similar to the earlier moto series that you have seen let me just bring some objects over here uh, but if you go in the settings and again if you just enable it and th this is the default setting guys and here it's in fact actually enabling the ai functionality by default if i you go into the settings if you see the shot optimization was enabled and all the photographs that you will be seeing 
were taken with the default mode with the uh, short optimization here ai actually uh, is uh, employed in the background you don't even come to realize it subtly like enhances the hdr the shadow detail and all those things so that you get actually a, a pretty good shot uh, the good thing is that uh, the front facing camera on this one can record if you go to video uh, it can record in 4k in fact i'll show you some samples that i've recorded in 4k First, some samples recorded on the holy day, and as you can see, the shots actually come out good. The color reproduction is actually really, really good on this one. And this is the portrait bokeh mode, and here also I feel it actually did a good job. This is the portrait bokeh mode with the front-facing camera, and again, these are regular shots with the rear-facing camera. As you can see, the color reproduction is good, and this is with the ultra-wide lens. One more example, this was with the main regular lens, and this was with the ultra-wide. Because the main lens is 1.4 aperture, you get that natural background bokeh or the background blur without even invoking the portrait mode and it actually looks very good some more outdoor shots and this was at 3x zoom and as you can see the color reproduction is really good even though this shot was in indoor conditions and here i use the 3x zoom one more example this is a regular 1x and this is using the 3x zoom this again is with the main camera and this was with the 3x zoom. I like the fact that the skin tone colors are actually uh, done very well on this uh, smartphone as you can see with these samples. One more example, this was with the regular mode and this was in the portrait bokeh mode. Some more camera sample shots taken during the daytime with this Moto H50 Pro so that you get an idea regarding its camera performance. Now for some night shots in very low lighting conditions and here I have to say this smartphone actually surprised me because of its f1.4 aperture it can bring in so much light even in almost pitch dark condition it was actually like this and in the AI mode it took the picture like this. So even in a pretty low lighting conditions this smartphone actually surprised me with its results. Now some samples with the 50 megapixel front facing uh, camera and as you can see the front facing camera also does a pretty good job front facing camera i have kept it actually to 4k came to this location where uh, we have some elephants actually uh, when i came here about 15 years ago if you notice that lake was over there hardly any water is there we used to have full water we asked we had to actually come with boats over here uh, but yeah as you can see this is being shot with the front facing camera of this moto h50 and i've set it to actually 4k by default it will be at uh, 1080p but you can set it at 4k so this is what you can expect uh, with the video recording with the front facing camera of this uh, Moto Edge 50 Pro and we came to this elephant uh, place as you can see hardly water is there actually earlier we had to actually come here with the boat but as you can see you're just walking over I'll zoom in and it as you can see hardly any water is there this is that pre-x zoom people are just walking from there and just coming back to this one x and let me go to the ultra wide to give you an idea about this place this is back to that one x so guys this is the motorola h50 pro smartphone what do you guys feel about uh, this uh, smartphone I feel Motorola has done a great job on uh, this one. All the features that you expect on a flagship are there on this one. In fact, the charging speeds are also very, very fast on this one. So that's why I say this is redefining the value flagship segment, I feel. Yes, the processor is the Snapdragon uh, 7 Gen 3. Uh, but again, yes, it's not the 8 Gen 3. Uh, but again, if they would have put a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 on this smartphone, then I think so the pricing of that smartphone would have increased uh, this one at least by about 25 to 28,000 or something like that. Uh, but I feel the Snapdragon uh, 7 Gen 3 is good enough processor for majority of the users. I would say 90% of the users. Uh, so if you are in that kind of a segment, I would say if you're not super hardcore gamer or need the highest Antutu score or something like that, then this is a good one. In fact, on Antutu, I ran it. I got a benchmark score of close to about 800K on this one. That is why I say this is a, a smartphone that is redefining the value flagship features it has all the uh, what do you say flagship features that you expect that generally is omitted 
on a smartphone in this price range. Generally, values, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, flagship smartphone, just concentrate on the flagship processor, but a lot of other aspects, for example, the compromise on the camera, wireless charging is not there, IP protection is not there. You get all those features on this smartphone. So certainly a very good smartphone, I would say, and I can certainly recommend this smartphone to my friends and family members. But what do you feel about this Motorola H50 Pro? Do let me know in the comment section below. Anyways, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. This is Ranjit and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, guys.